Oh yeah, look at that, that's beautiful. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the workshop. I'm hanging out again with my buddy Nate and we are getting ready to play with some colored pyrotechnics. We scrolled down into the comments and found this request from Benjamin Yonkers that says, make colored smoke bombs, pulls, pulls, pulls. Making colored smoke. This is something that I've been trying to do for about six years with common ordinary chemicals. I've tried using colored crayons, I've tried potassium nitrate. I've tried all the recipes I found online in all different variations with absolutely no success. I've also reached out to my friend Nerd Rage and contacted pyrotechnic companies and the feedback I'm getting from all these sources is those recipes online may not actually work. If you've tried any of them yourself, you probably understand my frustration. So in this video, we're gonna show you step-by-step step how to make colored smoke bombs that actually work. Now, unfortunately, we do have to crush your expectations. To get this to actually work, we had to reach out to a pyrotechnics company and order specialized chemicals. But now that we've got them, we're gonna tell you what they are and what recipes we're using to achieve these results I think we can all be proud of. The chemicals we're using for this recipe are potassium chlorate, lactose, magnesium carbonate, industrial dyes, and good old-fashioned baking soda. Now I got my potassium chlorate and lactose from a pyrotechnic supply company. You can synthesize potassium chloride, however it's not very easy or practical to do at home. Now lactose on the other hand, you've heard of people being lactose intolerant, and that's because lactose is extracted from cow's milk. That's where this stuff came from. How does this stuff taste? It's a little bit sweet, but I wouldn't recommend eating it by itself. I wonder if you can mix it with water and make milk. Magnesium carbonate is an inorganic salt that's obtained by mining a mineral called magnesite. So this stuff feels kind of like powdered sugar, but it's even lighter and less dense. The industrial dyes you see here came from a company called Walrus Enterprises. Now they deal on massive scale. They're used to dealing in 50 pounds or more. So for me to get one pound samples was very difficult and very expensive, but here they are. And of course, household baking soda, which you can pick up at the grocery store. So before we color our smoke, the plan is to make a double batch of all the white ingredients. And we'll separate those into six different piles. Then we'll measure out the dyes and add those to the six different piles giving us our different colors in theory. So that'll give us six different samples to play with so we can test whether or not they're even gonna work. Let's get busy. So here we are guys, we have 128 grams of our smoke composition base. The recipe that we used was 27% potassium chlorate, 18% lactose, 16% magnesium carbonate, and 3% baking soda. So what we're gonna do now is divide this white powder into six different piles, just over 21 grams each. Then we're gonna measure out 12 grams of each of the colored dyes, mix those in, and theoretically, we should get some colored smoke. Now we've just made our first composition here. This is the yellow smoke. We put it in a penny wrapper with a fuse sticking out of the top here. We're just gonna test this off to make sure they even work at all. Okay, back up. Oh yeah, look at that, that's beautiful. Oh, that's beautiful and a very rich yellow. It looks like we got the ratio right. If this were too little, it wouldn't be burning off at all. If it was too much, the dye would actually be turning black. So we found a very good ratio here. Ooh, and it's getting hot. Yikes, gotta stick that out. Ah! Dang! So our first test was very successful, getting them to go off in the penny wrappers. My question now is what happens if we just let this burn in the open air? So let's set the powder down on a brick and use a lit fuse to see if we can get it to ignite. Ready? <laughs> the fuse just kind of blows it away. Whoa! Oh look, a little bit of it's burning. Oh, and it's spreading. <laughs> a little bit of it's burning, it did catch. And I definitely see yellow smoke coming off that. That is thick yellow smoke. I'm gonna have to back away. Whoa! That's uh, some of yesterday's flash powder. Man, it looks like we are pollinating the neighborhood. All right, guys, I'm calling that a success. Yellow smoke bomb is in the bag. Let's go load up six more. All right guys, update. Now that we know that our test smoke bomb worked, we divided all the powder up into tubes and we got 21 different smoke bombs. That was enough for three from every color and we had a little bit extra, so we have three that are all of the colors mixed together. So now that we know these things work, there's only one thing left to do, that's to take them outside, line them all up, and let them off at the same time so we can see how all the colors work together. So we're outside, we're gonna set off a test blue smoke grenade, just so we can see which way the wind is blowing. And then we've got a whole lineup we're gonna set off all at once. Go. 
on the GoPro. So that was kind of interesting. We had all kinds of different colors there. We had like violets, blues, a little bit of gray smoke, but I'm calling that a success because it was colored. So let's go ahead and get the whole lineup and let them off at once. There they go. Well, they're all kind of going the wrong way. Let's look at that there. And it still went for the white car. <laughs> that looks pretty cool. All right, so that first test didn't really work out so well. We actually lined everything up so the smoke was blowing right in line with each other. So this time, we've offset it a little bit. We should get a little bit better flow. I got him. <laughs> that's why we have a backup. Oh, that's pretty. The red has wow, that's beautiful. orange in it. So that one worked a lot better. We actually put it so that the wind was blowing it this way and we could see all the colors. And you could see we actually had red, orange, yellow, blue. We had the violet, we had the black. All of them seemed to work really, really well. And this mixed color wasn't just black smoke, was it, Nate? No, it was just kind of a, a black mixed with maroon, a really dark purple, maybe. Kind of like an Ursula purple, <laughs> like that dark evil purple, which was really, really fun. We got a few left over, so we're just doing it one more time. So from our experiences so far, guys, it looks like these are working every single time. We're getting very consistent colors. We've got thick smoke. Everything looks really good. So for one final experiment, why don't we make a legitimate smoke grenade out of PVC pipe, light it off and throw it off and see how that does. So update guys, we just made some really cool looking smoke grenades. Each of them are a different color and there's quite a bit of composition so they should burn a little bit longer. I'm thinking these will actually be safe to hold onto the bottom of it before it heats up too much. So I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna hold this in my hand, light it off and watch the smoke waft off and observe the results. Light it up. Cool. Moment of truth, is it going to work? Is our red smoke grenade gonna work? Booyah, I think that's a yes. Oh, that's gorgeous, look at that. Look at the way it's wafting up into the clouds there. That is gorgeous. You know what else I'm thinking is you could probably throw this thing like smoke grenade style and just like have it roll into a building if you're playing airsoft or paintball. Wouldn't that be an epic smoke grenade? I'm gonna go get that before it stains us. <laughs> it's still going. That was awesome, we got three more. Let's light another one. Yes, yes. Wow, mine's spitting off little There's the green. yellow That's got spitting some green. That is oh, actually pretty so cool. So is the blue. Ow. Look at that. Is it getting hot? No. Whoa, that's beautiful. Let's interchange them, let's mix them like this. That's getting toasty. Ooh, yep, yep, it is. <laughs> that was amazing. That's a lot of smoke. The PVC actually is a better thermal insulator in this case than the steel. That steel got really, really hot. The PVC worked out really nicely though. I can hold this and it's actually really cool to the touch. The steel on the other hand, you gotta like play hot potato with it. That is quite warm, quite warm to the touch. What would have been cool is if we would have juggled these while they were blowing smoke. That would have been epic. In any case, I think we got a pretty good show. We learned something here. We got colored smoke to work. I'm calling that a success. So there you have it, guys. That's how you use potassium chlorate, lactose, a little bit of baking soda, and some colored dye to make yourselves some colored smoke the right way, the way that actually works. 
And a huge shout out to our friend Benjamin Yonkers for putting this suggestion down in the comments below. You can go check your YouTube inbox, Benjamin. We're sending you 25 bucks. We've got a lot of materials left over, so if there's anything you want to see us do with it, tell us about it in the comments. That's right, and thanks for joining us for this experiment today, guys. We'll be looking for you in the next one. Talk to you then. Oh, look at that. You can actually see like all the ash left over on the inside. I wonder if that means these could be reusable. Whoop! <laughs>